So I haven't made a video in a little while. You know, life in the holidays has been a little bit crazy. But very recently I heard something that I thought was very interesting and I wanted to make a video talking about it. As the COVID restrictions are starting to ease around the world, the conversation can now be had honestly, whereas it really couldn't be had at the beginning of the pandemic. People can have an honest conversation about risk calculation, like what risk is acceptable for certain things. Now, any honest person will tell you that life comes with risks, that everyone accepts some kind of risk for pretty much everything they do, because if they didn't, they would be too terrified of anything. They have to live in a completely soft room in a straitjacket, basically. And even then, they still have to eat food, which they could risk getting sick from, unless they prepared it all themselves. But then they run the risk of making a mistake and getting sick anyway. So there just there really is no way to live your life without some kind of risk to yourself. Now, obviously, most risks are minimal. You know, not all risks are equal in their danger. A very easy example is walking down the stairs. Whenever you walk down the stairs, you could slip and fall and hit your head and get hurt or die. But 99.999% of the time that people walk down the stairs, they don't have any issues. Another very easy risk factor is cars. Tens of thousands of people die or are injured every single year because of cars. But every single day, millions and millions of people drive a car with no issue whatsoever. Now, we as a society could ban cars. We could make it illegal for anyone to own or operate a car and effectively eliminate all cars. Doing so would make it so that no one dies in a car accident. The, one of the main downsides of getting rid of cars would be that commutes would be longer. It'll take people longer to travel, and they wouldn't be able to go as far as easily. So then society needs to ask itself, what is more important, the lives of everyone who dies in a car accident or the convenience of everyone who uses a car to travel? Now, obviously, you are not guaranteed to have a car accident. You can follow the rules and do everything right, and you could have some drunk driver hit you within your first week of driving, and you could also be a very irresponsible driver who doesn't really follow the rules, and you just get lucky and never have an accident in your entire life. There is no guaranteed outcome. However, most people are aware that the risk of dying in a car is so small to the average person that most people are willing to operate and drive in cars every single day. They're still cautious and they're worried about an accident, but not so worried that it prevents them from actually getting in the car. Another quick example is swimming pools. If we ban and get rid of all swimming pools, the number of people that die of drowning will be significantly reduced. And the only real consequence is we'll just have one less leisure or fun activity for most of society. But when we as a society allow people to have swimming pools, we accept the risk that some people are going to drown, and we accept that it is worth the people who are going to drown in exchange for everyone else getting the benefit of being able to have swimming pools. Same goes for planes, same goes for cars. There are many things that meet this qualifier of people will die if we allow it, but the convenience of it is worth that risk. Now obviously, kind of sounds a little horrible. Obviously, no one is hoping for anyone to die. Nobody wants anyone to die. This is more about just an acceptance that if you allow certain freedoms, the consequences of those freedoms could be people's deaths. Which gets me back to the topic for the start of the video, the easing of COVID restrictions and the you know post-pandemic normal that people are going to get into. It's pretty obvious at this point and pretty much indisputable that COVID is not going away. It's going to be endemic, kind of like the flu. It's just going to have highs and lows, waves, new variants, but it's never going away. So now, like many other things, we have to live with the risk of COVID. So we as a society need to determine what risk level is acceptable. One extreme example that I'm not in favor of, but I could see someone making an argument for, is we need to mandate that all people wear hazmat suits at all times in order to reduce the risk of deaths. Now, obviously, that's a bit more extreme than mandating that people be vaccinated or wear a mask, but I would argue that if people wear a hazmat suit, they would be even more protected than with a mask. And if saving lives from COVID is your ultimate goal, there's really no reason you shouldn't mandate everyone to wear a hazmat suit at all times because it will save lives. But most people recognize that that is an extreme inconvenience to everyone else, and we would rather live with the risks of not having everyone in hazmat suits than save the lives of, and force everyone to wear hazmat suits. This is kind of similar to the way that 
we'd rather some people die of car accidents every year than nobody be allowed to have cars. It is just an acceptable risk that we as a society take. Obviously, we do not hope anything bad for anyone, but we are aware that that risk exists. And we decide for ourselves how we are going to mitigate that risk and go about our lives with it as a factor. Now, I don't have a definitive answer for what risk is good and bad to take. Uh, this is more of just kind of a thought-provoking idea. Uh, let me know what you think about what risk is acceptable for society in the comments, because I, like, I don't think there is a correct answer on this. This all appears to be a bit subjective, so it's going to be different for every person. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope it was thought-provoking.